and welcome back now today we're going to be looking at a method of detecting voltages by the Arduino um, when it's running though from a buck boost device uh, it doesn't have to be a boost of course it can be a DC to DC converter that's dropping the voltage say from 12 volts to 5 the question is though how do you detect when the battery supply on the buck boost device is going flat when the Arduino is always receding 5 volts until the battery goes flat and it just dies instantly good question and the question was raised by Jess uh, a subscriber of mine she said I watched the video 160 where you describe how to use the internal AREF um, a fixed voltage generated by the Arduino and she said okay I can do that but of course the 5 volts coming into here or whatever voltage it is that your buck boost delivers you know 4.9 5.1 it's not not critical is it um, she says that's fine it detects that but of course what it's not detecting is the state of the lipo like this one here at the back and in fact i think jess uses one just like this it's quite nice we've used it in a, um, a demo before excuse my hand it's quite a chunky little thing look so you've got 186650 um, lipo there drop five volts uh, on the bottom 3.3 on the side and there's that usb socket at the top there that has got a little on off switch next to it and that delivers five volts just like it would be uh, if it was a, a wall box or something you know or a phone charger uh, we'll be coming on to that lipo and that circuit at the top there with the couple of displays but in the meantime let's look what i've got set up for this one right there we are i've just rearranged a few things on the desktop here and the sorry what oh my glasses yes i thought i'd be a, a little bit more festive as we're already into december now and of course as a lot of you know i've had trouble with my eyes still got trouble with them uh, can't actually see out of this one at the minute but uh, better that than a patch isn't it otherwise it scares the kids and the pets don't like it either so a nice festive pair of glasses goes down the tree i think this time of year and i'll be putting in details of what went wrong and what's going to happen in the future with my eyes on my blog right so i'm going to link to that and hopefully there'll be a blog page up there by the time this video is released thank you very very much for your messages of support and uh, you know get well soon and things like that on the last video greatly appreciated um, i won't go into it now because obviously people want to know about this this voltage detection so we'll leave it there for now and uh, come back to the blog a little bit later right so here we have then an arduino typical configuration with a, a buck boost here nice little one this especially for demo purposes in fact this one i believe is both a buck boost and a buck um well dc to dc converter really fixed voltage five volts out any voltage in pretty much up to about 12 15 volts and uh, this bit over here on the breadboard that's purely for this demo we wouldn't need any of that normally because these two alligator clips here are connected to a virtual lipo it's not it's connected to my psu to emulate what happens when a lipo goes flat but we'll come on to that in due course the the problem is though what jess has described is that this arduino is always receiving five volts or as close to it as makes no difference and it's impossible to detect when the lipo at this end here as shown by my little alligator clips here when that is actually on the way out so how does the arduino detect the lipo voltage rather than the voltage coming out of here so that you can send out a warning or do something when you know that that lipo is actually going flat because the mechanism that we used in video 160 which detected the vcc being supplied to the arduino by using the aref is obviously not going to work or rather it will work in the sense that it will say the battery is absolutely fine i'm receiving a constant five volts oh i've just died because the lipos died and i never got any warning so this is how you're going to get your warning when you're supplying it via a buck boost and a lipo Right, let's have a look at uh, a few characteristics of that lipo and uh, describe what i'm doing over here on this breadboard i want to shout out to ptb way sponsors of this video and today i want to concentrate on their smt assembly process for 30 dollars, you can have 20 pieces assembled and that's both sides of the board and free shipping there are various options to be had ptb way can supply all the components or you can supply some and they'll supply the others or finally you supply them all if you want them to supply any of the components, make sure you issue them a BOM, Bill of Materials list, and they'll contact you to let you know if there's any issues. And as I said before, with PCB Assembly, you get free shipping. 
just fill out this simple form indicating how many pieces you need assembled, how many components of each type, and they'll assemble both SMT and through-hole components, as I say, on both sides of the board. This is a board that I ordered recently, just five pieces and the assembly process. They normally allow up to 15 days of the assembly, but it depends very much on how complex the board is. It could be done in just a few days. PCB way assembly process. Try them now. Right, let's just dry up the circuit, or the, the block circuit anyway, of what we're doing here with this Arduino and DC to DC converter. Now we'll call it that rather than buck boost because you might be using a LiPo at say, you know, 3.7 volts, but you might equally be using a car battery at 12 volts or 20 volt volt, 24 volt truck battery or something. So we just keep it as a DC to DC and make it sort of fairly generic. Um, in fact, I'm going to take myself off here because I'm just going to hide the drawing. So uh, see you a bit later. Right, so over here then on the right hand side we have um, our Uno or whatever microcontroller you're using there, Nano, doesn't matter really. And over here we have our DC to DC converter. Now that's that's great. Um, so the, the output from this goes from the 5 volts here up into the VCC there and the ground has to be a common ground of course. Um, goes from there down to ground as well. Now that would work and you connect your LiPo or whatever this end. Brilliant. So just doing that will run your Uno off, you know, 3.7 volts. And let's stick to the, the LiPo example that um, Jessica is asking about, but it will apply to any particular voltage that you're putting into your DC to DC converter. So over here then, Let's uh, draw out a little battery and we'll assume for our purposes it's a 3.7 volt nominal battery. Uh, now normally that just, well that's goes into there and that's probably common ground all the way through here. Now the 3.7 volt uh, gets fed into there true, but this a, um, A0 then, if you were to try to measure, as we've just said, the 5 volts um, here, for example, you'd always get 5 volts or, you know, 1023 put into here. So that's not going to help you. So we won't, we won't do that at all. What we actually need to do is to measure the, the voltage at this point here, all right? Because the, the discharge curve of a LiPo battery, say a single uh, LiPo battery like we just saw, say an 18 650 in this case. If we draw a little chart, which I'll do over here. Now a fully charged LiPo is in fact 4.2 volts. However, your 4.2 volts drops fairly rapidly down to a nominal 3.7 volts. And that, that stays pretty much, I mean, it's dropping a little bit, yeah, um, but then eventually it hits the cliff wall. As, as it's run out of juice basically and the discharge then drops like a stone until we hit the 3.0. Now if your battery is protected at this point it's going to switch itself off. So at the 3.0 that's when the battery protection circuit will come in um, and well that's it it's died but what you want to be able to do is detect the voltage when it starts dropping from here to here roughly yeah so between these two points so from the 3.7 volt to well let's say 3.3 right because once it's dropped down below 3.4 i think this bit here is going to be so quick you'll never have a chance to recover it could be you know minutes when that happens so how do we detect this this voltage here then between the the 3.3 and 3.7 that's what we're interested in isn't it right the very simple way of doing it is as follows we'll assume for this purposes that the AO over here is interested not in the full charge of 4.2 um, not even 3.7 really because it's just fully charged. You want to know when it drops below fully charged. So let's assume we're looking for something like 3.4 volts and lower because once it hits the 3.4 volts um, that means hello we're, we're on this curve over here again and uh, we're, we're definitely dropping like a stone now. 
You can, of course, adjust this voltage on the A0 to whatever you, you want. And I'll show you how to do that simply with a, a potential divider over here. All we need over here is a couple of resistors and we take the voltage at that point there. Feeding that one, let me draw that in red so we can see it, feeding this one here into over here. The question is, of course, what are these resistors? Well, the formula for a potential divider is fairly standard, so let's get the formula for that sorted out. So the formula is your voltage in, which is the one over here, multiplied by the second resistor over here, all divided by the sum of the two uh, resistors. Now, the resistor values that I took um, over here, trying to keep the current down, of course, we don't want too much current to be dissipated through that, which you can make the battery flat anyway. So what I said was um, RA, so RA is equal to 4K7, and RB would equal to 24K. Um, that meant the current flowing through there would be 200 microamps. So the current flowing down here and down here to ground, so this circuit here, is going to be 200 microamps if we leave it connected like this all the time. More on that in just a little while. But the voltage output now, if we had um, 3.9 volts coming in up the top here, 3.9 volts in, at the output here we're going to get 3.3, which is of course what this can detect very easily. So your next question is going to be, well, hang on, if I'm detecting 3.3 volts on the A0, how does A0 know that we're actually trying to detect 3.3 volts and not something else? And the simple answer to that is on the A ref pin on the UNO, we connect that directly to 3V3 because it's a nice internal stabilised voltage. And that's it. So you get 3.3 volts connected to A ref. Uh, and the A0 is then going to be comparing this value here with whatever is on A ref here. Cool, yeah? So that's, that's going to work without a shadow of a doubt. Let's just have a look at the code running on that particular Arduino that we had earlier. Right, so here we are then, set up exactly the same before. The Arduino, the DC to DC converter, various resistors that... Um, exact same resistor uh, potential divider that you saw in the diagram and this wire here this gray wire that's the one coming from the junction of the two resistors all the way over here into a zero and on the arduino board this other gray wire or it might be white actually um, is connecting a ref to 3.3 uh, 3.3 of this side a ref over here so the a ref has been told use an external voltage that I'm going to supply. And it's very important that you do this first. You must tell it in the code, use an external voltage reference, and you supply it via that little cable there on the 3.3. And then you can supply your voltage on A0, and it will take everything on A0 relative now to that new external voltage. Right, so as you can see here on the right, the debugging window this is in fact cool term i've mentioned it before uh, very good it is too now that's displaying all the values um, that are coming into a0 which is obviously from zero right the way up to 1023 1023 being the maximum it can now detect because at the moment i'm running via these two alligator clips which are dangerously close together just to keep you on the edge of your seat there's 3.9 volts now coming into that dc to dc uh, converter which means that the if this was now a lipo for example this would mean that you've used it a very short while it's gone from 4.2 down to 3.9 heading towards the 3.7 so if i reduce that now 3.7 right so at 3.7 you can see it's it's jumped so it can detect you can detect now in your code that it's at 3.7 3.6 3.5 3.4 and so on all the way down to well until it stops working basically 
what is it, 2.9 at the moment. So I mean, by this time, your lipo will definitely be dead because, well, either if you haven't got protection on it, you're damaging your lipo at this point, or the protection circuitry on that lipo has already come in. So the window of opportunity, let's say, to um, detect that voltage on your lipo could be a long time if you've only got a very, very um, small amount of current being taken from it. But if you were, God forbid, actually using an Arduino like that, you know, a full-blown Arduino, that is taking something like 80 milliamps. Well, that's going to kill a lipo, you know, within a day, isn't it? So, yes, but if, you're, if you've got some kind of bare 328 uh, P-chip, firing up you know, once every 10 minutes or once every half an hour to detect the temperature or rain or whatever it is you're doing, uh, you'll be giving a huge amount of time between 3.9 and 3.3. .3. And in that time, you can send messages or flash an LED now and again. It always struck me as a bit odd, actually, that um, things that are running down in battery started flashing LEDs, thereby using up even more power. Smoke alarms do it, don't they, as they get lower and lower they flash a little LED and beep at the same time. So they're using even more power, therefore flattening the battery further. But if you actually do it just for 50 microseconds or something, it's it's visible and audible, but it, you know the amount of extra power it's taking is negligible. So yes, it's, it's a good way of actually doing it. Now, there's only one thing wrong that I can work out with this entire circuit design assuming that the ends of these crocodile clips, these dangerously close crocodile clips, um, assuming they were connected to a LiPo. And, uh, well, let's go back to the circuit diagram and have a discussion of that, shall we? So the problem, well, I say problem, it might not be a problem for you, but the 200 microamps that's going uh, from V in up here, all the way through these resistors, the potential divided to ground, could be a problem because at the moment we're taking in the region of 200 microamps in this configuration. Now, it might be, of course, that we can increase these resistors significantly. Say we did it by a factor of 10, so we had 47k up here and 240k here. Whether we then get enough current uh, flowing down here for the Arduino to detect it, well, that's something you have to do in research, really. But let's just say we want to keep this configuration, or something like it anyway, uh, but we don't want it permanently connected. Think of that bare chip breadboard that I did with the 328PB, or 328P, I think it was at the time, and we were taking, in deep sleep, 0.2 microamps. 0.2 microamps and yet here suddenly we're taking 200 it just doesn't make sense doesn't leave it on the other hand if your circuit is taking you know 10 milliamps then there's no point in trying to bring this one down any further because it's just insignificant but let's assume you want to actually switch this off well good thing that we already have a circuit to do that and we did that back in in video whatever about auto switch off there, there it is that's that's the one that's the video we did it in and it's an auto switch off and it looks something like this so this is the circuit that i'm sort of covering basically it's a two mosfet device and we use it to interrupt the power supply and then use the arduino itself a gpio pin to turn it back on uh, here so we we put in some kind of uh, 5 volt or whatever it is on the VCC via a GPIO pin and switch this first transistor on and um, which then switches on the second one and it's extremely easy to do I mean it's just well if you if you get those MOSFETs in a little dual package which I'll show you in a minute you'll see that it could be very very easy to implement as part of the auto switch off for this circuit over here and get this 200 microamps down to basically well nothing when when we haven't got a signal on the on off here over here then uh, it most definitely will be nothing so how could we adapt this circuit to supply the current here and just detect the battery power when we want to detect it good question glad you asked let's uh, draw this out again so the simple circuit would be to intercept the power that's going into the a0 analog input I say A0, anything but A0 is A7, depending on what sort of chip you got. So it intercept the power with a P-channel um, MOSFET. So the P-channel here at the top, we'd intercept the power. And um, the other 
n channels this one here is n channel just like that diagram um, is then driven by any GPIO pin you fancy. Um, you don't need a resistor in here. Frankly, I think I might be tempted to put something like 180 ohms in there just to prevent this ever shorting out, but you don't need it because this uh, N-channel trans transistor MOSFET doesn't take any current. But anyway, so what you say is in your code, in your code you will say, right, I want to detect the battery power now. And you don't have to do it continuously, of course. You know, every hundred times you wake up or every hour or something like that, you can say, right, I want to detect the battery power, turn on the GPIO pin. So the GPIO pin over here gets uh, switched on. Um, that then turns on this transistor over here, which then in turn brings the gate of this one here. Oh, I'm written in gate. Uh, let's put a G there. That's the gate. That gets brought effectively to zero. Uh, via this route down here through this transistor to ground and therefore current flows here now through that potential divider and you can then say right now go and read the voltage here and determine whether or not my battery is getting flat and then you think right I've done that which let's face it would take all of you know five milliseconds even if you let it settle for a bit and then you switch it off again which means the current flow through here is going to be 200 microamps for you know five milliseconds or something it's just a no-brainer really it's an easy way to do it let me show you a little tiny device that you can buy ready-made if you're not into you know create an smd chip type pcbs you can buy this n channel and p channel combined in one chip uh, on a little board a breakout board and you can buy those from you know aliexpress or banggood i think i bought mine from again and uh, let's see how that works then in real life so this is the little tiny breakout board that you can see in the middle of that um, breadboard there. It says CM, what does it say? CGMCU. What it actually is, that's the manufacturer. What it actually is, is it's two MOSFETs into the one chip. The little black thing in the middle there, you can see that. Um, it's actually an SI4599. Um, SI4599, yeah, N and P channel joined together. So you put, you know, the, the gate of one to the... Uh, drain of another and so forth exactly the same way that i just showed you in the diagram and i've got this set up with a couple of voltmeters on here just so you can see when one switches on so this voltmeter here simply shows you the power on the input terminals here which we're going to connect to this lipo and this one here is connected to the output of that mosfet the um, the p channel one to prove that when we connect this yellow wire to the positive it actually does switch on and switch off again more to the point so let's connect it all up and see how it works so i've connected it up to the lipo at the back there now you can see the input voltage 4.7 something i don't know why it's moving it out so much frankly it's probably a poor connection on the breadboard not to worry um, let's connect now the gate of the n channel to positive which is simulating your arduino saying go go there we are. So that says go, switches on that transistor inside there, which then in turn switches off on the P channel one and says, OK, we can now do something with that output here. We're just looking at the output voltage. Yes, I know they're not the same. And that's because <laughs> they're just not accurate enough to be the same. But, uh, you know, as a little tiny plug in unit, I'll show you what it is. Actually, they're very cheap. They've just got um, I think they've got a couple of terminals on the back or something. I've had these for absolutely years, but I've never used them in, for, you know, for real in a project. They look nice though, and they are cheap. I'll show you in a minute where I got them from. Still got the protective paper, I think. We'll leave that. Anyway, so that that shows that that works quite nicely. That little breakout board. So if you don't want to solder that little tiny chip there, which is pretty tiny, isn't it? But I mean, it's it's very doable. I mean, if you can solder SMD stuff, then that is very very doable. And indeed, I'm seriously considering putting that onto a board with um, a 328 of some kind p pb who knows and having an auto switch off function built into the actual board itself i mean it'd be nice to do that wouldn't it okay that's uh, that's what it is let's have a look where i got it from right here we are this is uh, banggood and they're only one pound 89 each if you buy more of them you get them for like a dollar three i think let's have a look 
Right, so here, for example, $11 and three, my head's a little bit in the way, um, $11 and three, you get 10 pieces. That's only you know, $1.10 then, isn't it? And they're all they're always useful little things to keep in. But as I say, free shipping, one eighty nine each. I'll put links down in the, um, the video description and on my GitHub. Great little thing. I've actually got some different dual MOSFETs, PNN channel, into a chip. I bought those from RS Components. Unfortunately, my lack of vision at the moment prevents me actually soldering those on. So it's just, just not going to happen. Not yet, anyway. But it will do eventually. Now, the ones I've got allow a 1.8 volt gate voltage, which is very low to switch on properly, I mean, below TTL, well below TTL. And that would be ideal for other battery controlled projects. For example, the reason why I was thinking about it whilst I was lying on my side with this dodgy eye, my little uh, toothbrush timer well, hasn't got an auto switch off and it's only running off a three volt coin cell. Now, even if it doesn't still run on a coin cell, but it does run on three volts, to get the auto switch off to work properly, this chip is probably not it. Um, it might work on three volts, but then if it goes anything below that, it might not work properly. I haven't fully tested that. But the, the, um, the dual MOSFET chips that I have got from RS Components do work right down to 1.8 volts, at which point that's, I mean, that's the absolute lowest, isn't it, that any kind of Atmel... 3 to 8 chips going to run at even at 1 megahertz so i thought yes i'm going to experiment with those and the um they are smd i think some, one of one of the set i've bought hasn't got any leads so that's going to be a little bit tricky to solder but i've um, read up about how to do that watched a couple of videos as well so that's all for the future um, sometime next year but for now this this little board it's very nice and it's nice to play with anyway and you can plug in all your pins onto the side and all that anyway i'll leave that with you and i think that sort of brings us to the end of this little video a uh, little bit disjointed because um, i had to stop recording part way through because my eye and would you believe my pc blew up yeah it just stopped had some kind of error message oh we're reporting this to microsoft yeah thanks bill thanks for that lovely um oh just before i go i did manage to find out where i bought this from um it was bang good again of course right here we are um it's you know, this is a three wire one which i think what the one I've got in my hand is also a three wire one. I doesn't use the three wire. So basically, what this needs is positive and negative to work, and then the yellow wire, as shown in this one here, goes to what it is you're measuring. Well, I think what I've done in my particular example, I've just shorted the yellow and the red together. So what comes in, it measures. Um, so this is slightly better, and I really should put a third wire on mine. But that's only one ninety nine, and doubtless, if you bought more of them, you probably get a better deal as well. Oh, there we are. Look, it says you can short it out. So you got the battery as it shows you there. Let me turn myself off. So on that top image you see there, it's got two line uses. So the DC plus and the yellow, the red and the yellow, are in fact shorted together. And they, it just displays whatever the incoming voltage is. Uh, but the bottom one, it shows you you can do um, a separate input voltage. Yeah, so it's nice and flexible. Cool. Okay. And for one one ninety nine, once again, it's sort of, you know, it's worth having in your little toolbox, isn't it? Things to play about with. Okay. I think we're sort of done, really. I'll um, I'll get all the information and links and stuff and put those diagrams that I threw together uh, down below as well. If you've got any questions, that'd be great. You know, stick them in the comments. Um, oh, yeah, of course. As it's been a while since I've done a video, it'd be really nice if you give it a thumbs up. Um, just to let YouTube know I'm back on circuit, as it were. They, they're probably wondering what's happened to me. And, uh, yeah, let's hope going forward we'll have a, a regular video slot again. Yeah, if I can just work with one eye, it'd be even better. Don't forget, if you want to know what happened to my eye, then look at my blog. There'll be a link to the blog down below, but it's it's <laughs> ralphbacon.blog. Really easy to find. And uh, for anybody's interest, you can just read up there exactly what's going on with me. Apart from that, it's great to have your company again. Really nice to be back in the driving seat. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.